Hi, my name is Mike and I'm one of the education consultants here at The Profs. Now, I've been working as a tutor for many, many years, helping several students get into universities like Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, throughout my time studying a variety of different degrees, I've actually done a degree in mathematics at the University of Exeter and at the University of Cambridge, and then a further two postgraduate degrees even at the University of Warwick. So education is a massive, massive passion of mine. And it gives me a great pleasure to be able to talk about how we get into Oxford as an undergraduate student to study physics for three or four years. Now, it's a very difficult course to get onto. So if we're looking at the three year average between 2021 and 2023 in terms of admissions rates, I would say 29% were interviewed, but only 11% actually got uh, a successful application in terms of getting onto the course. We at the profs are able to boast a 55% success rate in terms of getting into Oxford. So that is five times more than what this course offers. So if you like anything you hear or see in this video, then please go into the, the, the description below, give that a click and have a look more about our services or like and subscribe and ask a question and we're more than happy to answer anything that you might be curious about. So my first top tip is a really important one. Um, know exactly what you're getting yourself in for. The University of Oxford is one of the oldest universities in the whole of the UK. It's incredibly prestigious for a reason. It um, has very, very successful physicists that go there and make big sort of changes within the field. So it's extremely difficult to be able to get onto this course without any kind of support, which is again why I stress that you use a service like the profs in order to boost your chances. Um, now they have several different sub departments uh, within the Department of Physics at the University of Oxford. So if you have a particular interest in physics, which you really, really do want to emphasize throughout the entirety of your application, then it would be an extremely good idea to perhaps make some reference to some of the subjects that are within those departments. Now, obviously, if you're applying for multiple different universities at once, it's a bit difficult to be specific to one university. But universities will understand if you are making an application that if you really like, for instance, astrophysics, or you like the idea about quantum mechanics because you read about that in a book, and we'll talk about the importance of reading a little bit later in this video, universities will understand that actually some universities require more academic motivation than others. And Oxford is a very popular place for people to apply for. So make sure you know what's on the course, make sure you know what you're getting yourself in for. It's incredibly rigorous, but the reward is great if you can get yourself in there. That leads me on to my second point. Make sure you understand all the steps of the admissions process. Now, there are lots of aspects of this. We've already mentioned the UCAS application. So that is going to have a personal statement, a CV and recommendations from your teachers. So you want to make sure that you facilitate good relationships with teachers in your school. You're getting those top grades, aiming for at least two A stars and an A is generally the recommended sort of guideline for these courses. Although there may be a few changes based on actually when you take your A levels or when you actually, uh, in terms of what A-levels you take. Now, on that point, there are some A-levels you should not take that you will be blacklisted for immediately. So if you are in the position, if you are just starting going into sixth form, starting your A-levels, do not take uh, courses in theatre studies or dance, for instance. They're very obvious examples. But Oxford have a blacklisted course of, of A-levels, including critical thinking and general studies, which are sometimes seen as quite useful, but do not add to your application in any way. So make sure your choices are collated around physics and ideally doing another science subject as well as maths is generally a good choice if you're still thinking of ideas. On top of the UCAS application, we have the PAT, the Physics Aptitude Test, and that takes a lot of preparation uh, in order to get ready for. They ask questions in a very different style to what A-levels pose. So we cannot go into there blindly and expect to be able to do well. It takes many, many months, like with any new test, 
in order to prepare for something like this. And of course, it wouldn't be Oxford if we didn't have the interviews as well. Sometimes you have one or two interviews, usually one on physics, usually one on mathematics. And you need to be strong in both of these areas and you're going to have to be expected to be able to answer questions on these subjects on the spot. So you need to get into the habit of talking with someone and making sure that you're able to answer a question on mathematics or physics, not necessarily know the answer, but at least have the confidence to come up with and communicate some good ideas for solving a question. The important thing is you can facilitate academic discussion, which is a massive, massive thing at Oxford that you're going to be doing in all of your tutorials. It is important to note with Oxford that the recommended A-level grades is A star AA, where the A star is gonna be in physics, and one of those A's is going to be in maths, and ideally you want that third A to come from another scientific subject. We don't necessarily want to have A-levels that come from subjects that aren't particularly related within the sphere of, of physics, so even though it might be useful to perhaps do an A-level in uh, art, or history in another aspect, it's much stronger on an application to be able to put down another science, um, adding another string to your bow in your application. Moving on to tip number two now, you want to show that you have a strong love of physics as well as a good aptitude for mathematics. They need to go hand in hand. You cannot assume that you can go in for a physics degree and not study any mathematics, particularly because the physics courses at Oxford are very theoretical and depend on a very strong understanding of mathematics. In fact, if you've even done further mathematics at school, that is gonna help you even more because what they do look at very, very quickly is things like complex numbers, differential equations, and so on. If you don't know what those are, look those up. <laughs> Make sure you know exactly um, what you're getting yourself in for. So when you're actually getting ready for this uh, course, um, at Oxford. You do want to make sure that you show your love of the subject, again, through doing some recommended reading. And again, I would say start before, uh, in, before your summer, before you even go into year 13. Um, and the reason why I say this is because I have had so many students that haven't done any reading until September or October, right before their PAT comes up or before their interviews, and they haven't done any reading and they tried to scrape by with that side of things by actually just reading maybe the first chapter or the blurb, and that's not quite good enough these days. We want to be able to make sure that we read through the entirety of the text and we have a good understanding of what that's about. And if I was to ask you something interesting about that book, I could perhaps get a really good answer from you uh, to deal with that. Uh, it doesn't have to be a book. It could be a public access article. There's a lot of open access articles uh, for the public that talk about physics, as well as some very interesting uh, seminars to, at university. So do keep your eye out for opportunities with those. And of course, there are also summer schools that you can also attend as well. They do come with a little bit of a budget uh, or a price tag, but it's a great investment if you can get yourself onto a summer school course uh, because you are able to interact then, or you're able to show you can interact with an international community of like-minded students and actually get an engagement uh, for what being at university is even like, whether it's even right for you if you're still making that decision at this stage. So it's really important to be able to attend a summer school, but ideally if you can study physics there or something related to physics, maybe like engineering or astrophysics or even maths perhaps, uh, is a really, really fantastic thing to be able to write down on your personal statement or CV. And of course, as well, attending competitions and taking part in those is a fantastic way to demonstrate that you love physics. And the one that I'm going to be recommending in this video is the British Physics Olympiad. Now, if you are very strong in your school, your school might automatically recommend you for this, but you can apply for these competitions as an external candidate. Again, with a little bit of a price tag, but if you can show that you've had some engagement in higher level questions beyond your school curriculum, then it already not only prepares you for the interview process, where you're gonna be asked some very much out of the box questions, but it also shows that you have a very strong motivation for the subject 
and you can study it at a higher level, regardless of where you want to go. Moving on to tip number three now, my third tip is to make sure you have a five year career plan. And the reason why we say five years rather than just one year after you graduate from your degree is that not only do I want to know specifically what entry level position you're going to get on if you're going into industry, but then also what is that sort of final sort of profession that you really aspire to be, like, go into one day or become? Um, for instance, what is your dream goal? I want to be able to see that somewhere on your personal statement for UCAS, and especially given that you're applying to multiple different universities. There's going to be a lot of different universities that will want to hear this to, not just Oxford. But even if we're just talking about Oxford, they do not want someone who does not know the benefits of the course that you're going in for to study it. They really want people to, to have a good idea of what they're getting themselves into. In fact, I would even suggest you pretend that you're going to start the course tomorrow. What modules do you want to be able to study year by year? What would that be able to transition you into? It could be something to do with industry. I know the majority of people from experience really love academia. They want to be able to um, continue with that at Oxford, ideally, but maybe at another university through studying a master's degree or a PhD. Um, and obviously, if, if you've done an integrated master's in physics at Oxford, what a really, really good thing to be able to put down on your academic CV uh, in terms of getting you there. So that's an incredibly good motivation. But I remember when I was actually getting ready to apply for universities myself, um, I put down on my personal statement that I one day wanted to be a university lecturer. I knew very on I wanted to do um, further study beyond what an undergraduate degree would give me. Um, so if you know early on, great. If you don't, maybe come up with a few ideas, maybe talk to your school about it. Um, you're not going to be told off for having an ambition at this stage and then not following it through when you're actually doing your degree. So it's good to get an idea now. You're not going to necessarily be held to it um, when you're doing your degree. Make sure you put that on your personal statement uh, if possible. And my fourth point is a really interesting one and it's a fun one I get to talk about whenever I look at physics applications is have a look into what I call Fermi problems. Now, these are problems that I often remember um, my nan calling really stupid questions. <laughs> you can actually get quite annoyed about them. These are sort of the sort of problems that are very, very hypothetical. It's more so if you were perhaps to flick a feather at the speed of light, what would the physical impacts be of that? Um, funnily enough, it develops your critical thinking skills to be able to think of problems like this on the go with what you've already studied at school. And you're gonna get questions like this perhaps already in your interview. I'm not saying that's going to be a particular example, but it's a really great way to exercise your critical thinking. And there are also books that also talk about this um, that are very, very easy to get uh, that I would definitely recommend you looking at. So a really, really fun aspect uh, of actually getting ready for a physics application but if you want to improve your critical thinking skills, definitely take a look at solving some Fermi problems. And finally, point number five, seek help from an Oxbridge tutor. I cannot stress enough the benefits of this in terms of getting ready to go to Oxford for physics, let alone any particular course. Um, not all schools offer this as a, as a service, um, but this is something that we do offer at the props. In fact, we offer help with every single aspect of your application, whether it be getting ready for the PAT, whether it be getting ready for the interviews, whether it be something to do with UCAS, or even just boosting those grades to make sure that you actually attain those requirements of getting an A star and two A's. Um, we cover it. Well, I mean, we also cover university um, sort of topics as well. If you wanted to further your understanding of your subject beyond your curriculum, we offer it here. So please do get in touch with us. We have an incredible track record of being the best rated tutoring company on Trustpilot for seven years in a row. There's a reason for this. We are very experienced at what we do and we're more than happy to help you maximize your chance of success at getting into physics at Oxford. 
And so if this is you, if you're thinking about um, going onto this course, if there's anything from this video that you're interested uh, to know of a little bit more, please ask us a question in the comment section. Even better, give us a like, a subscribe, maybe share this to a friend that is also interested in getting onto the course too. And we will answer those questions as quickly as possible. Again, we have a dedicated team of ex Oxbridge um, tutors, including myself, are more than happy to give you some extra guidance on the admissions process for this course. Or if you have any sort of other questions, but you might want to hear more about our services, do give us a call using the number that is appearing on screen right now. Um, and again, if you want to have a look at our website, we have a link in the description as well for you to follow up. Um, but until we hear from you further, best of luck with your application.